Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about the kingdom of God inside of us and how it is related to the male and female. Let's see what it says in Genesis 1:27. So God, which means Eloah in plural, Elohim, created man, Adam, which means the person in his own image in the image of god he created the, him or her right male and female he created them this he for god could be she because uh, in the scriptures it says that that can be he or she genesis 5 verse 2 male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So what is interesting, I've been getting these things in prayers and uh, that's interesting. I've been studying how it works. We have the brain, right? Each one of us, uh, either you are a man or you're a woman. Both of you have a male and female brain. It's uh, one side for the emotions and things like that, creative. And the other side, more, more logical, like cold heart or even um, for math, it's really good. Uh, both of us, we carry the same thing. These are two sides of the brain and they walk side by side. There is no brain one on top of the other. It's male and female. They are walking side by side. And uh, I found it really interesting. And when you go to the eyes, it's even a little more complex because uh, on each eye, either the left or the right, they both, like you get the nerves from each side, uh, one from the left and one from the right, they need to be in perfect agreement to get the perfect picture in front of the eyes. Because if you see just with one eye, you're not even uh, able to find a loophole. And um, more interesting is what I know and I found out is that the right brain is the one that manages the left part of your body. And the left brain is the one that manages the right part of your body. Let's see what it says here in Luke. 17 20 to 21 now when he was asked by the pharisees when the kingdom of god will come he answered them and said the kingdom of god does not come with observation nor will they say see here or see there for indeed the kingdom of god is within you and which is more interesting what I, I've been learning through science and medicine, the people who have a brain damage, like they got a, a, an accident, crash one side of their brain. So if you crash the, the left side of your brain, the right side of your body will be handicapped, will be paralyzed. That side of the body will not work anymore. So serious is that connection between the brain and the body. So let's see what Matthew 12, 25 says. But Jesus, Yeshua, knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Matthew 12, 26. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? Mark 3.24 If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Why was Jesus saying that? Because they were accusing him of being Beelzebub, the lord of the flies, right? Baalzebub. But uh, he was not. And he said, if he's the king of the demons, how can he be casting out demons? Because they will be his soldiers, right? His messengers. But he was casting them out. That's impossible, right? 
then he will be fighting against his own kingdom. First Peter 2, 11. Beloved, I beg you as a sojourner. Who are the sojourners? All of us here for a short time in this earth, right? And pilgrims abstain from fleshy lusts which war against the soul. Isaiah 29, 13. Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of man. Why am I saying this? Because this perfection of the body, this kingdom inside of us, is being denied by mankind. They did their own laws and regulations. They didn't follow what God commanded. For this reason, we have so much violence and bloodshed in this earth because uh, they are not submitting to each other, right? It's the male and female. So uh, the body of the male submits to the female command, right? And they work in perfect order. The kingdom of God inside of you, this body can stand because they work in perfect order. If a, a part of your body is not working, the body cannot stand, right? If a part of your brain is not working, the other part of the body cannot stand. It's a pretty serious issue. And they work in perfect agreement. So they are one flesh, right? So these are the humankind, male and female. We still are male and female inside of us independently of uh, which gender you have down for reproduction purpose but uh, the fact that you're male and female is still in there ingrained in you not like what they did here on earth they they press down the woman and uh they put men on top but uh let's see also in the case of uh, the hands right if you have the the left hand and the right hand. Uh, let's say you write with the right hand and you do all the other things with the right hand. But some people, they are left-handed and they write with the left hand. But then that, in their case, that will be your right hand because that's the hand that manages everything. That will be the leading hand, right? Uh, let's suppose everybody writes with the right hand, right? Uh, or even if you want to cut a piece of wood, you'll grab your left hand in total agreement with your right hand. Though your left hand is stronger, right? It has more muscle because if you want to carry a bucket full of water or heavy thing, you'll not grab your right hand because you need your right hand to lead you in open doors and things like that because it has the skills, right? But your left hand is the one full of muscles that will be carrying the burden, right? Carrying the heavy weight and whatever things you need to hold while you are with your hands trying to touch and do the other stuff that needs to be done. Your right hand will even direct your left hand to hold the piece of wood while you want to cut that piece, right? Such agreement, this kingdom of God works inside of you. So how is it that uh, suddenly we all read in the Bible, it's all about men? So women, they are basically non-existent there. Yet uh, God keeps saying that salvation through Zion and the law will be through Zion. But then men, they include themselves in that when God speaks about the other Zion. Uh, but uh, they basically put their thumb on the neck of the women and they say that uh, they are in charge. But uh, are they or did they make it themselves? Because uh, if you go to the book of wisdom, there it says that men made their own strength the law. So here it is. Book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. It says, let us crown ourselves with rosebuds. So those rosebuds are women probably, right? Before they are withered, let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. For this is our portion 
They are not counting their portion with God. And our lot in this, let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the aged. Let our strength be the law of justice. So they didn't say let justice be the law. Uh, let our strength. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. So the one which is feeble is the woman, right? Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous because he is not for our turn and he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraided us with our offending the law and objected to our infamy the transgressings of our education. He professed to have the knowledge of God and he called himself the child of the Lord. He was made to reprove our thoughts. So here we can see that uh, they didn't want a reason. They wanted to go unchecked in their violence, lustful desires. They decided to do it all by, by their own muscles, by violence. They put the women down so that they could have their lustful desires fulfilled not considering anything about the women's rights. It was all about to go unchecked. So no checking. Like, uh, how can you rule a place if you go unchecked? If you don't have anyone counseling you, you're just taking, making your own decisions, not even checking with God, just everything out of your own mind, your own desires. That's what they did. That's pretty serious thing. So they did make their, their muscles, the law, they made it look like uh, it was God's laws. They changed carefully many things uh, in the scriptures. But there is still a remnant of scriptures there where we can pull the truth out. Uh, here it shows in Micah 2, 8 to 10. So this is from the daughters of Zion. They were in charge of the law. Lately, my people have risen up as an enemy. You pull off the robe with the garment. So pulling off the robe, that means they are pulling their robe, showing their power like to give the law. Plus, they pull their garments. That means they went even further. They raped them, right? From those who trust you, they trust that man, right? As they pass by, like men return from war. The women of my people you cast out from their pleasant houses. From their children you have taken away my glory forever. Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. So you are thinking this is your paradise. This is not, because it is defiled, it shall destroy. Yes with utter destruction. But uh, who have been spreading this kind of stuff? There is one guy, the false apostle Paul, plus the Old Testament, man-made stuff. But Paul also in the New Testament, he made sure that he will keep women enslaved again. But he himself confessed to have a, a demon in his flesh. Look here what he said, 2 Corinthians 12, 7. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan. So, a messenger of Satan is a demon to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. But also Jeremiah in the Old Testament has been denouncing what man made. Jeremiah 9.14 But they have walked according to the dictates of their own hearts. And after the Baals, Baals means master, also husbands, which their fathers taught them. So who taught them? Their fathers. It doesn't even say God taught them. Also in the book of Esther, not because their king was a godly king, because the king Ahasuerus was not a godly king. Uh, he was a wicked king. But uh, it is there to show us how this law came to be. Because his wife, the queen Vashti, he wanted her to come naked before a bunch of drunk men. She refused to. She resisted to bow to that kind of situation. 
he debased her, then he put Esther on her place. So just because it is written there doesn't mean that uh, uh, Queen Vashti was evil. Uh, but uh, then he passed a law there, Esther 1.22. Then he sent letters to all the king's provinces, to each province in its own script, to every people in their own language, that each man should be master, and that word means uh, Baal in his own house and speak in the language of his own people. So that sounds like pretty much a Bible, right? Which was translated into all languages to indoctrinate people into what he declared to be. But he was not God. He was not our creator. And ever since, we've been going through that law. And then we have a... Paul, again, the false apostle, in Ephesians 5.22, he said, Wives, submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Like a woman to submit to their husband as unto God. That means that he's putting them in worship to Baal. Because that's not worship to God. He's making the women worship their husbands. And that is Baal worship. This is a sin. And uh, the man who requires a woman to treat them higher as themselves, they are also committing a sin of uh, exalting themselves above the woman because they are making themselves their master as God. In Ephesians 5.23, For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Oh, so now, by Paul, not by God, he's saying that the woman doesn't have her own head anymore, so she doesn't have the male and female brain. She has a male brain, a male head on top of her. She cannot think on her own. Though, by science and by our very reality, we know that this is not so. Women are very smart. They even put laws against women, so they, they will not have access to reading and writing, uh, forcing them to stay in that ignorant state. But that was not the will of God. That was man-made law. Then in Romans 3, 7, that's Paul again, right? For if the truth of God has increased through my lie to his glory, why am I also still judged as a sinner? So he's admitting that he's a liar. He said that he's lying, but he's increasing God's glory through his lie. What is the purpose to live a lie, right? Let's see here what Songs of Solomon say. Because uh, Solomon was a sinner, but this he probably wrote by revelation, you see, because uh, he received wisdom from God. 6, 3. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. That Shulamite was not his wife. That Shulamite, she left. Uh, the end of the Song of Solomon, they say, return, return. She left. She was not his wife. That is to show that... Uh, I belong to my husband, right? To my beloved, but he belongs to me. There is no such thing that the wife belongs to the husband and she's as a cattle as men did in earlier times. They used their muscle, which was to protect women. They use it to oppress them. So they treated them as cattle. In Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord. That is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carve images. God made it very clear that his glory he's not going to give to any. Why is then Paul saying that the woman is the glory of man? Woman is not the glory of man. They are the glory of God. Genesis 2, 24. 
Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It doesn't say that there's going to be a, a, a lower flesh hanging down here. They walk side by side, one flesh, in total agreement, then that kingdom will stand. Will not end in divorce, in all this paraphernalia in this world, in all this bloodshed and violence. And then it shows also who will be in charge of the law again. Micah 4.2 for out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So Jerusalem will be like, a, let's say, the bride, right? Uh, will be in charge of the word, of speaking of the word. And uh, Zion will be back on her place. The daughter of Zion will be back on her place, her place of uh, giving the law. So not because a person has a weak body means that they are not the leaders. You can see that by your own hands, right and left hand. It doesn't mean one is greater than the other. One hand is the one enforcing the law, the other one proclaiming the law. And they work together. They make that kingdom of God work as we have this kingdom of God inside of us work in perfect order so that we can walk and talk. Because if uh, the right side doesn't agree with the left, we cannot walk, we cannot talk, we cannot do anything. This kingdom cannot stand. I hope it helped enlighten somebody here. I just needed to put this out. God is revealing this stuff to me, and I just need to put this out. Have a blessed day, everybody.